All right, guys, welcome back. We are talking about linear algebra, and in this video, we're gonna start talking about vector combinations and span. So when you first start talking about vector combinations and span, typically there's a whole lot of different questions that you can be asked, but often a lot of the questions are just like different wording of the exact same thing. So in this case, what we're gonna be talking about is determining basically uh, if one vector is a linear combination of a set of other vectors. And that question can really be worded uh, in three different ways. We can say like, is one vector a linear combination of some other vectors? Or is one vector in the span of some other vectors? Or write one vector as a linear combination of some other vectors? These three things are exactly the same and we solve them in exactly the same way. So sometimes what might happen in a lecture is you'll just be introduced with one of these lines and then in a test you'll be like ask one of these other things and if you don't know that they're the same thing then that can become a problem pretty fast. But basically, if you ever see questions worded in any of these three ways, the way that we solve it is basically you write an augmented matrix with this first blank as the right hand side. And, uh, and the, all the vectors on the other blank here and the second blank, those become the columns in uh, basically the other side of the augmented matrix. And so if we had, let's say, um, some vectors here, let's say we have vector u and this guy is going to be equal to 1, 1. And then we got this other vector, we got vector v, which is going to be one negative one. And then we'll have this other vector w, which is going to be equal to say negative one and three. So you might be asked a question that is something like, is w of a, a linear combination of u and v? You could also be asked, is w in the span of u and v, or write w as a linear combination of u and v, but we're just gonna focus on this one for this video. We'll, probably, we'll kind of cover these ones in the next couple videos. So the way that we solve this is we write our augmented matrix, we write our columns as u and v, so we get one, one, that is vector u, and, uh, and then for v, we get one, negative one. And then we write w as the, the column that's on the right-hand side of this little divider line. Um, so w was negative one and three. Now, basically, when you're solving any types of problems that look like this, uh, what we're also looking for is that, is there a, basically, is there like a, an equation or an expression that we can write that is uh, C1 times U plus C2 times V equals W. Um, now, if you had more than two vectors, then you would basically just have another C thing. These Cs are just scalars. So as when you see scalars times vectors here equal to another vector, this is basically the expression for a linear combination of vectors. Um, and if we can write this, then basically W would be a linear combination of these other ones. Um, so we want to be able to figure out what this expression is, basically. Uh, and again, so we had um, U, V, and W, just like that. And actually, if we go ahead and solve this by basically getting it down to reduced row echelon form, we'll be able to determine if this augmented matrix has one solution, infinite solutions, or zero solutions. And as long as there is at least one solution, then that means that W is a linear combination of these other ones, or however many we have here, basically. Um, so let's go ahead and and uh, and work this through. Um, if we if we found that there was no solution, then basically W would not be a linear combination, and that's basically all you would have to say. So the first thing that we want to do is our first elementary row operation. Let's just do row two minus row one. All right. So we have row one is not going to be affected by this step, but here in row two we're subtracting this out. So we have one minus one is zero negative one minus one is negative two, and three minus negative one is positive four. All right, the next step, let's do another elementary row operation. Let's take row two and divide it by negative two. Okay, so row one is not affected by this, so we have one, one, negative one. Um, here we're going to have zero. This will become a positive one, and this will become a negative two. All right, um, let's do another step here. We'll just have row one minus row two. So we're going to get one. So we have one minus zero is one. One minus one is zero. Negative one minus negative two is positive one. And then row two was unaffected by this. So we had zero, one, negative two. 
All right, so hopefully you, when you see this, you can tell that this means that this augmented matrix has one solution. Basically, if we have an augmented matrix that has the form like this, or basically we have this kind of staircase or this diagonal of ones where all of the leading entries of every row have zeros below or above, um, and then this on the right-hand side, we have basically anything. This could be numbers or zeros. Um, this mean is that there would be a unique solution. Even if this guy here was zero, that would still be a unique solution. Contrary to this, where we, we start drawing our diagonal, um, but there is, to the right of a leading entry, there's another number that's not zero. And so if you see something like this, that immediately should tell you that you have infinite solutions. And if you see something like this, where we have a line of zeros equal to a number, and I actually realized once I updated that to a zero that that would have to also be a zero basically for that to still be a single unique solution. Um, but if you have a bunch of zeros with a number, then this basically means that you're going to get some like totally crazy expression saying zero equals something that's not zero, and this tells you that there is no solution. So um, hopefully this is not new to you. I've, I've I made a video on this stuff in the past and uh, if that's a really good thing to just be able to spot about how many solutions an augmented matrix has um, about well, yeah, whether it's a zero, one, or infinite. Anyways, so moving back at this, when we see this, we have a diagonal here of ones and there's no entries that are like uh, to the right or left of those leading entries. So this means that we have one unique solution and really what that solution is in vector form is uh, just one, two, or if we wanted to write it in this expression here, we could write that we could sub these in. So this would be like C1 is equal to one and uh, C2 is equal to negative two. And then we could just fill in this as, um, well, C1 is one. So if we wanted to write it in vector form, really we could have vector U, which is one, one, uh, minus two times vector V, whoa two times vector v, which was one, negative one, and that is equal to w, which is negative one, three. All right, and so like really there's a little one here, but if you don't see a one there, that's okay. You don't really need to write it. So basically the answer to this question is w, a linear combination of u and v. Well, if these are u, v, and w, then the answer is just simply yes. Um, and if you're asked to provide it, you can write this or, you know, you can write it just with letters, we say like this is like one u plus or minus two v is equal to w if your professor is asking you to write that expression. But if they're just saying like is this a combination of u and v, then it's really just a yes or no question. And the one thing that I just want to add here is if we plotted these vectors, then we'd have u here, which is one one, and uh, v, which is one minus one, and w, which is minus one one two three. So if we plot these all in standard position like this, then really, if when something is asking is uh, is one vector a linear combination of the other vectors, a linear combination uh, really just means that one vector can be found by adding up some combination of the other two vectors. Um, so if we come in here and we added these things together. Uh, well, the solution was, uh, where was the solution? 1u minus 2v equals w. So if we add tip to tail and we add in negative 2v, so that would, negative 1v would take us to here and negative 2v would take us to there. And so by vector addition, we would actually say that, yeah, u, 1u minus 2v really is equal to w. And that's all this is saying. It's just saying a linear combination. Yeah, there is just some way that we can add these two vectors together to get that. And this is a single unique solution. We could have done it the other way, right? We could go negative 2v, so that would take us out here first, and then 1u. Either way, we, we basically organize this equation. We're, we're still getting the same answer. It's a single unique solution. Um, when you do have uh, I think I'll try to highlight this in the next couple of videos, but when you do have one with infinite solutions, it's because the two vectors at the beginning are parallel to each other and they just form basically a line. And the third vector is also parallel, so it just lives on that line. Um, or in cases where you have no solution, that would be like a parallel line here. And then we're trying to add up those basically to get out here. So we'll, we'll I'll make sure to do those in the next two videos as well, just so you see some visual examples. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's how to determine if one vector is uh, is a linear combination of a set of vectors.